Hello everybody, are you looking for a great gift idea to give to somebody that you know that loves building model kits? Well if so, check out this new video I'm making today showing the 1972 Chevy Blazer by AMT Ertl Model King. This model is on loan from my good friend James and it's pretty cool if you can find it out there. Don't forget to check out our website www.monster-hobbies.ca to see all our current model kits. So without further ado, let's go down to our bench, open up the lid on this great thing, and see what's in the box. Once again, we return to our back roads of this great country, where we get to check out our 1972 Chevy Blazer by AMT Ertl, released under the Model King moniker. It, here in our, illustra er, our photograph here, we have a picture of this camper in the back. It says on the box that camper was sold separately also part of the Model King lineup. So this is a while ago now though. I do believe this has had a release under round two once more, but not too certain. Again, another great model kit loaned to us by our good friend James. So if we turn it up on the side, we can see this sort of interesting photograph. We've got like a real person integrated into a model kit. <laughs> so, um, Complete diorama blazer and camper built by Ken Hamilton. Photos by Ken Hamilton. So this is kind of a cool little thing off the side. Here, I'll just bring this up to the camera. There's an idea of sort of what you could make, given the right amount of stuff. Some pretty cool looking pictures of all this out in the rugged country. There's the stock version of the blazer. As you can see, pretty nice. Model built by Steve Goldman, photos by Doug White. Pretty cool stuff on this box. And then on this end, you get to see the uh, stock blazer driving off down along the sea coast here, probably on the east coast. Okay, so let's see what's inside here. So removing the top of the box, of course we're confronted right away by our decal sheet. I'm just going to leave the cover on the top. That'll be the uh, thing that'll keep you going till the end of the video. <laughs> Here's our blazer instructions looking very much like they're out of the 70s, which I do believe these would be a copy of. Take a look at those following this unboxing here, the simple unboxing part. Here's our chrome tree, because again everything in the future is chrome. Looking pretty nice. Looking just like a blazer of the era. Then we've got some blazer components in here, as well as our blazer body with no roof on it. A lot of tires in this bag. Actually, looks like enough to do both an off-road and a regular street version. Actually, they all look like off-road tires, so interesting. We'll have to take a look at those in a minute. And then we have our final white components here. Engine block, interior, all that great stuff. Off-roading was very popular back in the 70s. Vans, trucks, all kinds of things. So what we'll do now is clear the box out of the way, take a look at those instructions. Here we have our 1972 Chevy Blazer instruction sheets. And does say important, read these points before you begin. There's only six, so that's not too many points. This kit may be built more than one way. Decide on which version you want to build before final assembly. Test fit all parts before cementing. Cement all parts unless otherwise indicated by the instructions. Use paint and cement made for styrene plastic only. Trim excess plastic from parts before joining. Paint all sub-assemblies before attaching chrome parts. Scrape chrome and paint away from surfaces to be cemented together. Following all of the numbers on the instruction sheet, beginning with number one. <laughs> Start at number one. The first one first. Okay, anyway. Opening this up here. You can see it's not too much on the instruction sheet. I always like this font style because when I was young, I had a bunch of Star Trek model kits. And they all had that font in them. So it's sort of a nostalgic thing. Now I'm not sure on the engine here. Uh, looks like a Chevy 350. What I'll do is I'll focus in on the panels and we'll continue. Here we have our engine assembly plans and what we can see here is 
the engine block being two pieces. There is this big massive four-wheel drive transmission sitting in here. The transfer case and the transfer case front. There's the exhaust manifold and this does look like the um, 327 Chevy sort of like the Corvette style manifolds of the 60s. There we've got our cylinder head covers, our valve covers, distributor at the back, the manifold, the carburetor, the air cleaner, upper radiator hose, front cover for timing chain, oil pan is separate, oil filter is up. I like when the oil pan is separate because then you don't have a seam line running through it that you got to deal with. Uh, we got the top, the water pump up here, our <laughs> Delcrotron. <laughs> Never heard an alternator called a Delcrotron before. Anyway, um, there's our fan belt assembly and our fan. Maybe the Delcotron was like a special alternator. Uh, then we got a two gear selector here going off the side of the transmission and our starter motor off the side. So there's also a uh, racing type of motor. We'll take a look at that coming up next. Now if you want to give your blazer a little extra oomph into it, <laughs> here we have this chrome intake manifold with eight velocity stacks that pop in. Then our upper radiator hose, distributor, valve covers, cylinder head, engine block left and right, oil filter, oil pan, front cover, water pump, the Delcotron, and then our fan, or sorry, our pulleys, our fan. Uh, we have our front wheel or four wheel drive gear selector glues on here. Interesting, they don't show the starter on there like in the other uh, thing above. And then we've got a transfer case and transfer case front cover. So interesting stuff. Now we can take a look at two different panels here as we check out our wheels and our chassis. So this dividing line shows the stock side on this side and the off the road on this side, which now be known as off road. Anyway, there's our four wheel inners. We get five stock tires, so I assume one is gonna be a spare. We have our choice of two front wheels. Oh, actually, got two front wheels. It looks like a full cap on here. And then the two rear wheels, which the hubcap seems to be sunken in at the back. So that might have been special for the four wheel drive mounts. And then our off the road, we have our four inner wheels. We have these Gates Commando tires. And then you have, you can put on your reversed wheels here in the front and then some for the back. Now our chassis, we've got our frame, and then it shows what's going on here. A muffler and tailpipe, exhaust crossover pipes, all this would be hooking up into your engine. It doesn't really show the engine going in, which is interesting. And then for off the road, we hook up our front, oh yeah, there's front drive shafts here going off from our transfer case, and then exhaust headers as well. It says locate assembled engine here. So yeah, all that would go together. And then we can continue with our chassis in illustration number four coming up next. Here we are with our chassis in illustration four, which is a little easier to follow than the illustration three. So this is universal to both. So we have our front springs going on here and then two piece differential with the spindles for steering and a tie rod up front. Now, unfortunately, these don't actually steer, but it does give the correct look. There's our rear drive shaft going to the two-piece rear differential with the springs there. It says the notches will go up underneath the Buenos notches. <laughs> okay, so there we go for our chassis. Now, carrying on the chassis into the final construction bits, we have our steering box and our steering arm gluing together. Two sets of shock absorbers, left and right, or the off-the-road shock absorbers, which appear to be double, yeah, it looks like dual shocks in there. And then we've got our two rear shocks in the back. Um, there's optional off-road ones and custom ones, so the off-road ones are more heavy-duty. It's collared all the way down to the bottom, whereas the stock ones are only half collared center spring shocks for off-road so oh 
uh, I guess you get uh, four shock absorbers in the back here. Oh yeah, four on the front, side by side. So real heavy duty stuff. Then we got our metal axles going through the plastic uh, differentials and our assembled wheels as well. Next we can carry on to the interior. Here's our interior for our fun little Chevy Blazer. Really groovy machine. So we have our dashboard, our tachometer, our steering wheel, transfer case shift lever, a heater going on the inside. That's pretty neat. We've got a center console here. Looks like it goes toward the back. Oh, everything goes toward the back. <laughs> There's our bucket seats with the benches in the back. Here we have our rear seat, which has a separate armrest, three pieces. And then, what's this? Off the road, off road fuel tank, auxiliary fuel tanks. There are two of them. And then we have our spare tire mount. So it's a stock only, so you don't get the big monster. Um, Gates Commando tires sitting in the back here. Maybe they go elsewhere. Let's carry on here. Spare tire mount, wheel back, tire, and wheel. So that would complete our interior. Now here we have our body going together. We've got our chassis dropping down. There's uh, body reinforcements here, one per side. Just strengthen up the uh, entire blazer. Four speed shift going in, up underneath. That's bizarre. <laughs> Why would they show that there now? Anyway, there's our body, our windshield to go in, our tailgate in two pieces. Here's for the optional top here. The side windows, your rear window, and oh, another rear window. Uh, oh, I see. The, that's the glass. This is the frame of the rear, rear window. And then you've got your hinges there as well. So there's our body all going together. And next we have our final assembly. So this is where we get our gas cap going on, our tail lights, our backup lights, our rear bumper. And then you can pop the roof on here. You can either glue it on or leave it so you could uh, have it removable. There's our rear view mirrors, our spotlights, driving lights, our hood, a heater motor, battery, the front grille and bumper, and we've got a tow bar here as well, and then some side trim. So overall, this looks like it would actually be a pretty fun kit. And that completes our look at our 72 Chevy Blazer instruction sheets. And now we will go and take a look at our plastic components. Here we have our Chevy Blazer body. And as you can see, there's a lot of cross braces and supports which need to be removed out of here which is actually a good thing that AMT put them in because imagine this going through the mold process without them. These side panels would be pretty warped inward, I can imagine. There would be nothing to support them when they came out of the mold. In order to keep the strength up, the entire uh, engine bay is molded as one piece. I know some of you might have liked to have this differently, but actually this all adds into the bracing in here for support so this thing comes out of the mold nice and straight. Anyway, looking at the side profile of this, you can see it is actually quite a nice model. You've got this nice molding comes around here, all your marker lights are in place, and your door handles. So very nice uh, considering how this is molded. There's some mold marks under in the fender wells, which again you'd use your number 16 blade. Some along here inside might interfere with the front windshield going in but overall I mean this is pretty crisp considering that I do believe this is from 1972 vintage you can see the nice detailing on that front engine or radiator support pardon me little teeny <laughs> radiator opening <laughs> can't be too conducive to getting air into that engine bay However, I mean, look at the nice detailing on here. Sadly, there's a little sink mark in here, but I don't know if anyone's really going to see it too well. Considering that GM painted all this semi-gloss black inside. Got windshield wipers and a little vent. Overall, I think this is quite nice. Even in the back, you got all that sunken in detail in the rear quarters. Or not rear quarters, but, you know, the... I don't know, are they rear quarters? Pickup bed, anyway. 
so there it is. As we were pulling the parts out of the box earlier in this video, you got to see that there were two bags of parts trees. So this is everything that's in the first bag. And as you can see, it's a lot. Here we have our parts tree with our engine. This is our interior with the rear tailgate and dashboard. Here we've got our frame and a bunch of the components for that. There's our rear trunk and interior bits. Uh, I think these are the big shock absorbers and our supports. And then here we have all our running gear bits. So there's a lot going on. So let's just take a look at these one by one. We'll move them off to the side. There's so much stuff didn't even fit in frame. All right, we want to focus on our bits here. So as you can tell, here's our engine and all the rest. You got your, look at that big four-wheel drive transfer or transmission going on. There's our valve covers, distributor, cylinder heads. There's our fan, the exhaust manifolds, oil filter, I believe, starter, and our pulleys, our intake manifold, the air cleaner. There's our oil pan, radiator hose, that's the transfer case. There's the selector for four-wheel drive, our water pump battery, and our exhaust manifolds. Lots of nice detail on them, flipping them over. Actually, not really bad for mold marks. Maybe a few here and there. Of course, you can always clean those up later. Again, nice work for the vintage. Here's our interior. It's upside down, and hey, surprise, surprise. RC2 has done it again, broken off the steering wheel and stuck it in a bag. Again, I don't know what that's all about. If you know why RC2 was doing this back in the day, you worked for them, let us know in the comments what was with this plastic bag steering wheel business. Okay, so there's our interior. It's one solid tub, as you can see. Door panels are all molded in, which is pretty uh, light. I always like when these are molded separately because then you can get great detail like these window cranks. But on these, they just kind of look like little blobby representations. Again, typical practice for the 60s and 70s for model kits. There's mold marks right on top of those fender uh, aprons. So those could easily be filled with some filler and you got a good chance of getting in from this side with a file sandpaper block to get them down. There's no pedals molded in the floorboards, which is interesting. Okay, so there's our dashboard. I know this is white, white plastic. You can't really see it too well, but it looks like there's wood grain molded in on the dashboard panels, which is very 70s. Wood grain everywhere. <laughs> and then uh, your tailgate. Remember the wood grain in people's basements? So, and everywhere all along the walls very 70s okay i'm looking at the braces i guess the wood grain paneling goes back to the 50s as well there's our uh, braces for the body i do believe these are shock absorbers different things uh that's our oh no this would be the mounts for the spare tire i guess you look at those instructions again there's our center console for in the interior. Actually, our rear wheels have the hole in them, which is accurate. Three, four, five bolt pattern. I thought they might have been six. But again, you can see all that nice detail in there. If you hear a little click, click, click in this video, it's the camera lens trying to adjust itself. I don't know why it's having struggles today, but anyway. There's our frame. I mean, look at that nice detail on there. You can see a bit of flash in here. Again, easy to clean up. Very nicely done. Uh, exhaust pipes. It's kind of funny, the little section of plastic missing right out of here. I wonder if that's where the steering wheel was. <laughs> that's so goofy. Uh, other little bits there. Nice work. Very nice, very nice. Yes, yes. 
Okay, we got a wheel back here. And then all this nice detail on the springs and the differentials. You can see this one's offset. That would be for the front. Uh, steering linkages and all the rest. There's our off-road shock absorbers. They have the... Well, they all have the little springy things on them. I guess that's a heavy duty. Heavy duty. That's basically the skinny. Nice leaf springs. Got all the leaves in there. Okay, so that is our components. Let's see if I can arrange this back in time. Oops, something happened. Oh, sorry James, I just knocked the tailgate off. <laughs> Whoopsie. Okay. So there we go. Again, nice, uh, nice detailed parts. Let's take a look at our second parts tree. Now here's the lowdown on our second parts tree bag. I meant to say parts tree bag and not parts tree, <laughs> but uh, didn't come out of the old mouth there. Anyway, uh, we get our seats here with some nice detail molded on them. There's our blazer hood, and as you can see, there's a little rectangle in here. That would be, uh, you drag your hobby blade across there underneath, and this will punch out, and then uh, your engine with the velocity stacks can breathe right through the hood. Here is our top for our blazer and there's a window panel in here it's sort of tied up in and I don't want to straighten it out because I know I'll snap it off that's our rear tail hatch there's a an auxiliary air cleaner with the snorkel off it and a bunch of little detail frame bits and then here we've got more components and our tailgate so let's take a look at these up close so I'll just move these out of the way here. I'll take a look at our hood and seats. So like I was saying, see that nice detail on there? Just like the real thing, only smaller. It can pretty interesting upholstery pattern in here. You could uh, really take a look at your old sales brochures and come up with some pretty exciting high Baroque style uh, <laughs> sort of upholstery pattern for there. Can really see that rectangle through the hood so if you paint this use primer and then uh, paint your color over top should make it disappear you can see the nice fireproof matting underneath a uh, couple little mold marks in the corners not too bad overall i don't know this is uh not too mold marky so i'll move that off to the side here's our top coming into view next some nice uh, vinyl on here, or texture anyway, whatever it would be. Underneath, nice ribs inside. Little hat, little things here for the latch on that tailgate. Okay, looking at the tailgate, you can see there's some little slots in here. That would be for lining it up. A couple of mold marks off the bottom of the tailgate. There's a little air cleaner with the snorkel on it. And not sure what those other little pieces are. Probably bits for the frame and whatnot. But overall, pretty nice again. Then we get into our... Whoops. Next component. It looks like we got a bottle jack going on with a little hook here. Oh, that would be our winch for uh, the off-road. This is a off-road pan to protect your front um, differential. That's why it's offset there. Oh, well, you can see that. There it is, in the shadows. Wheel backs and then our seat backs. Got that nice texture. So you can fold this down, the rear seat. Pretty much like the uh, 55 Chevy Nova. Or not Nova, Nomad. <laughs> Pardon me. Nova's a completely different car. And then there's our tailgate. Chevrolet stamped in the back, which is nice. And then, as you saw in the other parts, trees, there was the um, the in, inside of the tailgate. There's a little couple little notches for the hinges for the tailgate. Maybe that's what those strange components were. Okay, so that completes our look at our white components. I'll just rearrange this here a little bit. And uh, there you go. Next up we have our chrome, my favorite parts tree, because everything in the future is chrome. 
Anyway, is that getting worn out? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, now, normally I say, hey, look at how great this chrome is. But this time around, I notice there's a lot of yellow in here. Sort of a little gold tinge. I don't know if their uh, chrome plating was really that good when this kit came out. Um, I don't know how well it'll pick up on camera, but we can at least try. Anyway, so as you can see here, we've got our front and rear bumpers. We got our grill. These are that those uh, fuel tanks. There's our intake manifold for the velocity stack machine. Here's our custom wheels and our stock wheels. Now. I noticed uh, in the front they've got those big peg things sticking out here. That's of course part of that four-wheel drive steering system. Um, I do believe you can turn these to tighten it up. I, I'm not sure though. I, I'm not a four-wheel drive expert. I noticed a couple of funny parts that aren't in the instructions here. We'll take a look at those in a minute. But yeah, you basically get everything. Um, sadly, James, I hate to tell you this, but... There's a big twist in your chrome tree. I <laughs> uh, hope that doesn't affect your parts in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, I don't know. Can you see this really well? James will see it when he builds this, but it's all kind of yellowy gold in here. And I don't think that's intentional. I think that's an accident in the chrome processing. Overall, though, the detail on this is really nice. I mean, you could strip it down. You could paint this with L-clad. Uh, some chrome paint. But look at these guys. These are hard hats. <laughs> chrome plated hard hats. Took me a while to figure it out. Um, now I have a figure here. This is a 3D printed one from my friend Wit. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you could see that if you cut off his hat, you could fit this right on his head. This little funny hard hats. So anyway, that's kind of silly. But I guess it was a blazer edition here where they're off-road or, you know, a repair crew. Some of you guys would know that a little better than me. Or I could, you know, cycle through old box art on the internet. Anyway, the back, again, like, mold marks aren't too much of an issue on this thing. They are, they are around. You'd want to paint this flat black in here so when you turn your model upside down, you don't see it. Like the chrome sticking up, I mean. Um, there's our intake manifold. The velocity stacks are pretty tall, as you can see. So they would pop up through that hood opening, definitely for sure. I don't know, though. Overall, I think it's okay. It's just too bad there's that yellowing effect inside this chrome. Next up, we have our clear components. And here's our front windshield, our headlights, and little parking lights, and some of the lights for our various off-road lanterns and whatnot. And there we've got our side window glass, as well as our little red tail lights. So, not too much to really talk about here. I mean, glass is getting to be glass, after all. Um, there's our headlights. Remember, there's that square pattern in them so make sure it's north and south east and west and not at 45 or other weird degree angles the plastic glass was in plastic bags which is nice because it keeps it from getting scratched there's a lot of mold marks on these side windows right on the glass so i'm not sure what you want to do there they are sunken in so they will come up tight against the body sh or the roof the shell there. So, I don't know. I found that a lot of the glass in the 70s model kits have mold marks on them. There's not much you can do about it. Anyway, looking at our tail lights, nice little rectangle pattern. Actually got little feet that stick out. So those would go into those fenders. Again, not too bad. I mean, considering the vintage, considering how it was molded, you'll be all right. And here's our 10 tires that come with this kit. Up top we have Goodyear Tracker ATs, which are pretty solid looking tires. And down below we have Firestone All-Terrain TCs. So I don't know, in the instructions it called these things Gates Commando tires, but I don't know, maybe that was something that came with the original kit. Who knows? 
anyway, looking at these Goodyear Tracker ATs, they're a nice solid tire all the way through. Good tread pattern on them. Little like wavy lines if this picks it up okay. Again, nice looking. Um, I'm not too sure on these tires. Again, I'm not really an off-road guy. If they're all black wall or if they had white raised letters, because that was starting to become a thing back in the day. Anyway, um, there's our Firestone All Terrains as well. And these ones are hollow tires, if you can see inside. Let's go hollow. <laughs> uh, these ones are also nice. They've got the good chunky terrain pattern on them. Sort of that old pie plate uh, 60s era on the side, but not as pronounced as the old off-road tires used to be. But again, some really solid looking stuff here. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet. And here's the unveiling. Get ready for some pretty awesome looking stuff. There it is. The really heavy duty Baroque style 70s graphics. Look at that orange, bright orange, medium orange, and red along the bottom. Black striping in here. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. And then here we have Michigan license plates that say Blazer. And that completes our look at our 1972 Chevy Blazer from AMT Ertl Model King under the old RC2 banner. Another big thank you to James for letting us take a look at this. And if you've built this model kit in the past, we want to see your pictures over on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video where I got to show you inside the 1972 Chevy Blazer by AMT Ertl Model King, released in 2006. And if you like these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. Visit our web store at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.